Dropping a pin. South. Help Two is on the way here! I don't know whether it's been the past month or so doing three videos on Suicide Squad or playing South Park Snow Day, or the fact that I have not had a night with the lads playing games, having a beer or two and a laugh at the same time, but as 90% of the gaming community already knows, Helldivers 2 is a fantastic game, and because of that, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more Helldivers clones. Just like how, well, most likely the next Pokemon game will be Pal World. But, well, there may be a few of you out there that haven't played Helldivers or you're on the fence of whether you'll enjoy it or not. Or maybe you've just tunnel visioned into Dragon's Dogma 2 or you're still playing Baldur's Gate 3 and you haven't seen anything about Helldivers. If you ignore all the less pleasant oh, aspects. God, what I wouldn't do to that. Fine. What? No, 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 it's not even mine. I just clicked on it. Quickly, just as a sidebar, I tried Baldur's Gate 3, I really did, and honestly, that game was not my cup of tea. I put about 8 hours into the game and I just didn't enjoy it. So for those of you who are looking for my Baldur's Gate 3 review, I'm sorry to say, it's it's not coming. Oh no no no, not that, just come on! But what is Helldiver 2 and why should you play it? Well, it's Starship Troopers as a video game, but it's done a bit differently to the video game, Starship Troopers Extermination, but it's also got aspects of, say, the Terminator franchise and Warhammer 40k, and its gameplay is simple and fun, and you'll honestly play this game for hours on end and lose a dangerous amount of time. He forgets birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, both religious and secular. <laughs> Look familiar? Helldivers 2 was developed by Arrowhead Game Studios and published by PlayStation, and a great move to publish the game on both PlayStation and PC at the same time. I think I think we need more of that PlayStation. But the story of Helldivers. Well, it's in the opening cutscene and that's all you really need. You play as the galaxy's last line of offense, the Helldivers, landing on planets and liberating them for Super Earth, and that's the real extent of the story. I mean, what more do you need? Liberate planets for Super Earth and do your part for sweet liberty. I mean, there is a bit of a story and conspiracy that the Helldivers are evil and... But the gameplay does loop back into its story as Helldivers is a bit of a live service style game and no, it's nothing like Suicide Squad, but the lore and the story does progress when liberating planets and there are some new challenges too, such as new enemy variants and upgrades being added into the game completely randomly. But, well, what about the gameplay? Well, as you can see, or you've probably already seen splattered all over Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and everywhere, Helldivers is a third-person action shooter where you and three others will complete objectives like clearing terminated nests, downloading data, destroying propaganda, or just eliminating a certain amount of enemies. You'll start each mission by landing down on a planet in a drop pod, which is awesome, and you'll have a decent sandbox area to explore. You'll complete side missions, you'll call in an extract once you've done your main mission, or you'll have something like, say, kill 250 bugs and then extract in a very, very small area. You make it home now. Each mission you complete too will increase a percentage on liberating a planet, and once the planet is 100% liberated, Super Earth then occupies that planet and the progress is shared by every player. So even if you complete a heap of missions but there are other players trying to liberate the same planet and fail their missions, the progress may drop, which I think is a fantastic idea because this game is PvE and it really is everyone working together and the online community for Helldivers is pretty damn amazing and I will get back to that in a minute. The variety of planets here in Helldivers 2 also is nothing to scoff at. Some planets have weather events and modifiers that will alter the gameplay. The beloved Malevolent Creek, which has recently been liberated, had ion storms which would affect support weapons and stratagems. Snow planets can have blizzards which will affect your field of vision as well as your movement speed. And hell, even fighting on a snow planet, you'll have slow movement when you walk through thick snow and ice will alter your movement and you'll slide around like you're playing Crash Bandicoot. But it is a third person action shooter, what's so special about that? 
Well, besides having friendly fire turned on constantly, so team members can be killed by your own weapons. Hey, so how's the war going for you guys? I can't wait to go back home and see my mom. <laughs> it's hilarious. The combat in Helldivers also has some weight behind it. Now, the previous games I've been playing, Suicide Squad was hectic and fast paced, and South Park Snow Day was floaty and the weapons felt like they had no real impact to it. That's not the case when playing Helldivers and you become a Helldiver. Weapons pack a punch and it sort of feels like you're playing Gears of War. The good ones, not the bad ones, but you feel the power of a shotgun. Grenades or explosions fling enemies or allies into the air. Weapons have recoil and physical weight behind them. For instance, you'll move a pistol around a lot easier when aiming, but when using something like, say, a rocket launcher, you need to line up your shots. What's also a great addition to is the aiming system with weapons. Now, you can simply aim in third person, but there is a quick option to switch to first person when you're aiming if you want to focus your fire, but you trade off situational awareness, aka you're not going to know if you're going to get swarmed from behind or from the sides by terminates. And that's when the attack comes, not from the front, but from the side. Weapons also can be altered in the field, a little similar to say altering or changing out your weapons in the Crisis games. Now, by holding the reload button down, at least for me on PC, you can toggle some options with most weapons. Now, you can turn on and off a flashlight, you can change the fire rate, you can adjust the zoom on your scope, and, and each weapon too actually has some uses depending on what enemies you're facing off against. It's also the fact that when playing against the Terminator-like automatons, it feels like a Terminator movie, and some planets will have a bit of a horror atmosphere to it as well, and it's kind of cool. Now, yes, the automatons can be damn horrifying, especially when a berserker, an enemy with buzzsaw for hands, appears through the bushes, or a hulk, which is a walking tank a bit like a dreadnought, causes your team to flee in terror, especially if there are multiple hulks in the area, and there's even worse than that. Or we've got the Terminids, which are the bugs from Starship Troopers or Tyranids from Warhammer 40k, where you'll have bugs spew acid at you, leap through the air, and heavy armoured units that charge at you head on. And what's even better too is as you turn the difficulty up, you'll go up against newer enemies and tougher enemies like tanks for the automatons or the bile titan for the terminids. But enemies aren't everything, so what else? Well, Helldiver 2 has what's called stratagems, basically heavy weapons and cooldowns that will assist you in combat. Whoa. What's that? These can be something like, say, a simple free supply, so you can just restock your ammo, your grenades and your stims, or you can call down special weapons like a heavy machine gun or a rocket launcher to just strap onto your back. But best of all, calling in heavy artillery strikes from your command ship in the sky, and it is impressive, and it's a visual masterpiece. But most of all, it's damn hilarious when a teammate is in the strike zone and gets killed from it. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm perfectly fucking fine. Thankfully though, you can call in reinforcements which brings back your dead allies. And to do this, or to use any stratagem, at least on PC, you hold down the control button and press the relevant buttons to use the stratagem. And while, yeah, it's pretty simple, it's a little bit Guitar Hero-y in some instances, or reminded me of Guitar Hero, but in the chaos that is the gameplay, it is very easy to get frazzled and enter in the wrong code forcing you to have to re-enter the code to call down your stratagems or to resupply yourself or to even call down reinforcements if you've accidentally killed someone from using a 380mm. Now while yeah, the commonly used stratagem will be near muscle memory after a few hours of gameplay, like the reinforcement stratagem, any time you unlock a new stratagem, which you will do by going back to your ship after each mission, spending in-game currency that you earn through missions to unlock new items, but any time you unlock a new stratagem by purchasing them, like say, the Mortar Launcher or the 500 Kilo Bomb, that's a new input you need to learn. Okay, but what else, duty? What about the developer's arrowhead constantly updating the game, giving us new vehicles and items to use? For example, they recently added the Patriot Exosuit, basically a dreadnought from Warhammer 40k that has a rocket launcher on one arm and a minigun on the other. And we didn't just log in and have this ready to use, we the players had to liberate a specific planet to unlock this exosuit. 
The devs have also dropped in flying bugs for the Terminids and the automaton dropships which will actually chase you down and shoot at you as well as hinting something else coming for the Terminids. Now this looks back to what makes Helldiver 2 such a great game, the online community. The game's opening cutscene, the training course, the overall vibe is very much Starship Troopers that signing up to be a Helldiver is the best thing that you can do and the online community are somewhat following this vibe. What surprises me too was the community of Helldivers, a PlayStation exclusive game, are asking for reinforcements to liberate planets and they're asking for the Xbox community and Xbox players to join the fight. I think that's something that's kind of really important. A couple of months ago, my Twitter feed was full of people arguing on why PlayStation is better than Xbox, why Uncharted is a better game than the unreleased Indiana Jones game, why Starfield sucks, why The Last of Us is the best game ever, the general console war discussion, and some of it was getting pretty filthy. But Helldivers 2 has had PlayStation fans ask for reinforcements and they've asked Xbox to join them in the fight and I'm all for it. Now we've had some previous Xbox exclusive games come to PlayStation now like Sea of Thieves and if PlayStation turned around and gave Xbox players Helldivers 2, it's not only giving us the reinforcements that we need to liberate planets, but I think it would start to bring a bit of an end to the console wars, at least in my opinion. Sam got the bug! Sam got the bug, man! Good job, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Alright, what else, Duty? Well, play Helldivers with some mates. Honestly, it is one of the greatest multiplayer games I've ever played. My only criticism with it is that, well, so far, the player count I've had with, say, a group of six mates wanting to play together, Helldivers 2 is currently a four-player co-op game. Now, perhaps the devs are going to give us some larger modes with, say, maybe a squad of 20 taking on an army of Terminids, or storming a castle of the automatons, who knows? But the only issue I've had with Helldivers is that I've got a larger group of mates who all can't play together, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, yeah, I've had some bugs here or there, but they've mostly been hilarious when they happen, and they're fixed when I die and then respawn in. But a game so simple, so entertaining, so chaotic was exactly what I needed in my gaming library. I've got games that I frequently return to with mates, or some even new releases that we all check out when we review them, but Helldivers 2. I purchased this because everyone has been talking about it, hyping it up, and I gotta say, that hype is real. Now, it won't be long before we start to see Helldivers clones, and the foundations built here would work really damn well for a Warhammer 40k game. Tactical Marines deployed and ready. Charge! The enemy wishes to fight, brothers! Let us indulge them! Unleash all fury upon them! It is better to die for the Emperor than live for yourself. Chatting with my brother a while ago, having a beer, he sold me on how Helldivers works, as well as how it would work in the 40k universe with Tyranids, Necrons, and then even a PvP-style mode, which would basically be the Horus Heresy, and yeah, I could totally see that working, you just need to have that game developed by the Helldivers crew. Honestly, Helldivers is a game that I can spend an unhealthy amount of time playing. Does it have some downfalls though? Yeah, sure. Firstly, it's great to play with friends, but playing it solo can be a bit daunting. Sure, you can play the game by yourself, but missions are generally structured to be played with other Helldivers, and when you turn the difficulty up, you will 100% have to deal with some daunting situations and you gotta do it by yourself. And playing on higher difficulties is the only way to get some of the rarer resources required for some upgrades. Yeah, the Helldivers community is pretty damn good if that you play a mission by yourself. You generally have randoms drop in and join the game for you and help you out. Personally though, I found myself not even booting up the game if my mates weren't on. Now, sure, I did mention that we've got a group of six plus of us all wanting to play Helldivers at the one time, but there was a moment or two where all of us were busy and we just couldn't get on, and I think that's something to note. Helldivers is great to play with mates, but playing with randoms, sometimes it doesn't hit the same. Fucking hell! What happened there? Your fucking Tesla tower. <laughs> now, I saw someone make a comment in my South Park Snow Day video somewhat comparing Helldivers to Sea of Thieves. And while this theory is like comparing a Formula 1 car to an electric scooter, yeah, sure, they're both modes of transport, but one is a work of art and the other is used by a dickhead. 
But I see the point of games getting stale, and while Helldivers isn't getting stale right now as of the time of this video, it very well could at some point if the developers don't make things interesting and fresh. But honestly, Helldivers is a game where each objective or mission feels like it's being pulled out of a movie. Trailers and gameplay sometimes just don't do the game justice and you need to check it out for yourself. And if you've not already got it, I'm sure a few of your friends have already asked you to pick it up already. But whether you're interested in joining the Helldivers or you've been spreading democracy for some time, always remember to play with each other and play with yourself. Become a legend. Become a hero.